Welcome to Eat Theatre, Sleep, Repeat, the Grand Theatre podcast. I'm joined by the cast of this year's pantomime, Sleeping Beauty. I've got Philip Meeks alongside me, as well as Hayley Tamadon and Steve Royal, here to talk all things panto. And I wanted to start off, and I'm going to start, I think, with Steve for this one. Um, I want to talk about comedy, because you have been the comic here for, for quite some time. Um, and I guess with a role like the comic you've got to change it up every year so tell us a bit about silly billy this year yeah oh yes there's there are, there are <laughs> awful nuances of character yeah some years i can be silly some years i'm idle I <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i can be slightly muddled <laughs> <laughs> yes it's a it's a it's a really brilliant challenge for an actor like myself <laughs> no i in all seriousness it, it, it is it's the same character virtually every single the only one that's slightly different is buttons because yeah, there's yeah. a lot more pathos involved mm. and i actually feel when i do buttons that it's proper acting yeah, yeah, like. yeah. but I've, I've been thinking about the silly billy and i always do I, I spend far too long thinking about the characters that i'm going to portray <laughs> and the silly but the thing that's going through my head whether this makes it into the pantomime or not i still don't know but i'm thinking of the saying that people are mispronouncing, you know, like the hyacinth bouquet. Okay. I think it's not actually silly. People keep saying it's silly, but it's sci-li. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm actually like sci-li, like Billy. We like uh, that. People But then would you not be sci li be li Or sci li by li Yeah, well, that's funny, isn't it? That'll keep that in. But I think that could yeah. be the, t- the, the tag yeah. at the end. Well, exactly. Every time we put silly Billy, it's sci li be li Every single time. I think that time. works. How many times? That absolutely works. Because essentially when people come to the panto at Christmas, they're expecting certain boxes to be ticked. I'm talking fairies, princesses, happily ever afters. But for the grown-ups, and I think I'm speaking for all the grown-ups here, you want the funnies, you want the laughs, you want the laughs that fly over the children's heads that make your belly laugh and go, did I... Did I? Is that what they just said? I, I think we're lucky in the sense that we've got producers. UK productions are heavy on the comedy and they focus on the comedy. Some Panther productions seem to like they like a big they like the spectacle they like the dancing numbers they like the musical and focus a little bit more on mm-hmm. that the Blackpool Grand it has always been certainly all the time I've been here it's been very comedy focused which has played into my hands because obviously you know they, they, they appreciate the you know the comedy that I, that I put in and, and contribute each year which is nice and I'm guessing as well when you when you're playing the comic you are working alongside the full company the full cast you're in the storyline all the way through and of course you work alongside the dame I'm guessing is the dame the person you work with with the most? Yeah, I think most of our scenes are together, aren't they? Uh, yeah, spend a lot of time off stage as well. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for me to finish. We're back on that again, aren't we? We're back on that no, it's an on. interesting dynamic because the dame is funny in their own right, but the dame, I think the way Panto is now, the dame is also there to be a in some cases, a feed to the comic. I think the thing is, the dame has their moment Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. the comic has their moment and you've got to know whose turn it is, you know? And and it's lovely working with really experienced um, comics because you know that they're thinking the same as you and you can hear... Last time you could see... You know, Steve's face concentrate when he'd come up with something. <laughs> little noise, whirring. <laughs> also, I think uh, the more the years you do it, I remember, the, if I think, go back to the early pantomimes that I did, I was very much in, just because of the excitement of doing it, and yeah. I'd, I'd st- I would stay on, like, you know, I'd do like 15, 20 minutes of me opening spot, and it's ridiculous. But you learn these things, and... and you, we'll be doing that this year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, Tamadin's got a watch you on. Learn, you do look, You do learn and you learn that it's a much more of a team effort than perhaps I, I, I'll openly admit it that I've probably realised in the past <laughs> I used to think it was go on do your spot and then then get off and someone else but that's, but but that's the great thing about pantomime is you bring people from all sorts of Absolutely. walks of life you yeah. bring yeah. you know yeah. rather trained Hayley Tamadon <laughs> <you bring, laughs> she wishes <laughs> you bring a, a, a you know a comic you, an old scrubber like me you know you, you bring <laughs> people together who you, you'll meet all walks of life in, in a pantomime I think what you're saying is essentially it's an ensemble isn't it so you, you people with all different skill sets coming together to put on something magic and the skill I suppose for the team is that then it's equally split the 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 yes. comedy and the storytelling and, and everything is equally yes, split. Yes, yeah, but you're also I mean you're also 
it's a great thing because there is a, a another member of the cast, and that's the audience in Panto. And you know, a child audience is the most discerning in the world. If you go on any screenwriting course, they'll 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 show Pixar films. Children are very sophisticated about story. And the when I used to direct Pantos when I first started, I, I don't know why I must have been mad <laughs> when I started. You know, I would say to people, the children will love you if you. If you play, if you if you do what they expect from you, yeah, you know, and don't try and build your part up, don't try and cut it, you know, do what they are expecting, and they'll love yeah. you. Otherwise, and also love. you kind of lose the kids a little bit if you go on and on and on. Do you know what I mean? You kind of know in yourself, especially in comedy, yes. you don't want to lose the kids. You, you've you got them. The minute you walk on, you've got them in the palm of your hand yeah. and you want to keep them there until you exit and someone else goes on the stage. There's always, as a cast member, and I'm sure maybe you feel it in the audience too, but certainly as a cast member stood in the wings watching things go on, if you start hearing murmurs from the audience, the kids started talking to their moms, you think, ah, oh, we've just lost them for a second. Right, we need to, do you know what I mean? Yes, you can feel it, can't Yeah, you? you can feel it as, a, as, as, a, as an actor on stage. You want to keep those kids. This is everything for them. Do you know what I mean? You want to keep sense things as well, don't they? The, the kids yeah. can sense if... It sounds ridiculous, but if you're not happy in your role or you've got some grudge that you maybe hold it on from day one of rehearsals or something, <laughs> the kids will sense that. They sense the sense of dropping your confidence on stage and the key to the key to any performance is confidence. Yes, yes. and getting that across. And, and they'll be merciless when they when they sniff a weakness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. they will. That's yeah. when they'll start shouting. That's when they will get fidgety. They're, yeah. If, yeah, yeah, if they think you're disinterested. They will be disinterested, yeah. and especially well. in Panto, you've got to keep the energy and the pace going, going, going. If you, the minute you as an actor slow that down, you've lost them. That's yes. it. The kids are, are you gone. Ca- you hear people say, "I walk, I walk." You hear people walk yeah. through performances. I don't know how you can in a Panto. No, no. I know. It's, like, it's like come it's on. It's, it's, it's got to be. Yeah. You've Panto is like being on a racehorse. It doesn't matter what part you're playing. You've got to keep that horse yes. race going, and the energy's going, and you've got the kids, and you've got the families, and you've got. Do you know what I mean? You've got to keep that energy up, and. That's why I love Panto so much because I am an energetic person like that. I love that sort of, you know, bringing that to life on stage. But if you've got that as an ensemble in Panto, you've got magic. Yeah. You've got magic. If all of your cast feels the same, we're in it, we're going to go for it, you've got magic on stage. Oh, I'm excited already for this year's show because I think you've got a winning, winning formula. I want to talk to you specifically then about about dames and working (coughs) alongside people like Steve. I'm hoping... Is there some slapstick in this year's show? Have we got um? Have we got a, a slosh scene? scene. A oh, a kitchen! Scene. I love a kitchen scene. Oh yeah, there's scene. a good Tell mucky, good mucky kitchen, kitchen scene, scene for oh, you. But, uh, but we don't. We, this is UK productions. We won't get the script till two weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the kids love a kitchen scene as well. Yes. you know yeah. they they love it. Don't it's they? all the daft jokes and all the sort of like little flower, little flower, and they're groany, but it but. They're expected. But I, 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 I get that they're grunny, but I also would say as the mum of a six, soon to be seven-year-old, they're the bits he laughs the loudest. So mm. I laugh the loudest at the clever jokes. Mm. And I know Steve does tell the odd very clever joke. <laughs> and, I, and I really laugh. He's not. He's yes. just like enthralled. Like well, that's the thing about entertaining on different levels. That's the, the that's flower The flower in your face or mm. anything yes. like that, where you're drenched or whatever. Yes, children like best naughtiness. Bits. They laugh yeah. at naughtiness. Yeah. I remember the last time, it was a few years ago, I think it was last time we did this would be a bit so, so seven eight years ago yeah. last time we did a scene like this and I had eggs smashed on my head mm-hmm. and I was convinced right being a bold balding fella yeah. I was convinced that these eggs was making my hair grow <laughs> and it wasn't just not no, you'd no, had time to go to the hairdressers over every Christmas every night I'd have like three or four eggs smashed on my head and be rubbed in by the dame or whatever I can't remember it'd be rubbed all and, your, and, and, your then I'd, and then I'd have to leg it off. I'd like one scene so I'd have like, like about three minutes to rush up to the shower get my head under the shower wash it off and get me reapply your makeup and get back on stage and I was convinced that this egg was making my hair grow and then I realised about 
oh, three or four days from the end of the run that what was actually making my hair fluffier, not growing, <laughs> was the fact I wasn't putting shampoo in it every day. I've been putting mo- uh, conditioner in. Stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I had the most beautiful conditioned hair. And that's, and, and I genuinely, I was, I was convinced. I thought, I found the cure eggs. Yeah. I'm going to sell a book. Rich. I'm going to sell a book on, you know, baldness <laughs> cures after this. Just to buy three eggs a eggs day. I've got protein in them. Well, maybe. Then and protein is... is well, good well, for hair yes. growth. Well, well, let's take, a, let's take think, a before and after shot yeah. this year's pantal there. Yes, there must Absolutely. be something to get follicle stimulation. Going <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe we could try an eggs conditioner combo. That seems <laughs> okay, to yeah, be the winning... That, maybe that is it. Seems yeah, to yeah, be the winning formula. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to ask also then about each of you, why you think panto stands the test of time? Because essentially... Pantos don't happen anywhere else in the world. So why do now, in 2022, when we've got phones and technology and everything is instant, we tell these stories every year with the same sort of company? As it were? There's fairies, there's princes, there's dames. There's, why, why does it last? What's the secret? What's, is it just being British? I mean, what, what I is I think it? there is a bit of element of that. I think you can see that in the Queen's funeral the other week. The fact, you know, that people queue, which that was the most British thing to do, and we yes. did it. <laughs> I think the great thing about pantomime is, you know, people say it's tradition. You get people all the time going, well, it's tradition. I think the thing about pantomime, the reason why it survived is there's no tradition. It evolves, it changes, Uh, and it reflects our life and our society. And, you know, you'll be thinking, oh, can we get a Philip and Holly joke in this year? Or will it be too late? And it it reflects this. And it's sort of like, the, the thing is, everybody thought, Everybody thought pantomime was, the marketers now say, have have made it about Christmas. It was never about Christmas. It happened after Christmas. It was always about the end of the year, Mm. a sort of like a reflection, if you like, Mm. you know, but also the most important thing is, is it's, it's the most simplistic and effective form of storytelling as well. Also, it does, like you mentioned earlier, it unites... I was going to say industries. It's not just one industry, isn't it? But it unites artists from so many different mm. backgrounds. I know Ken Dodd used to always talk about this. It's the only time, mm-hmm. certainly for me as a stand-up comedian, mm. most of my year is spent getting in my car, driving hundreds of miles to do one solo gig on my own. But there'll be other comics on the bill, but generally I might probably double it up. So I won't see you, don't meet with other people. It's a very... Lonely. lonely. It's very sad, but it is. It's lonely. lonely. Suddenly, at Christmas, and this is why the passion, this is why the passion for it will, will never go, is... People like myself who love to work with other people and with us, an ensemble cast are suddenly meeting. I'm meeting directors, we're meeting dancers, we're meeting singers, we're meeting dames. All these different characters all brought together into one, what is a very intense group. I always, when you watch I'm a Celebrity, always reminds me every yeah. year of the panto cast that first day when they first get together and have little challenges that's like the rehearsals if you like yeah. and then they're in the jungle <laughs> together that's your panto run yeah. and, there's, and there's little inviting there's little arguments but essentially everyone's sticking up and everyone wants the, the, the final product to be brilliant you know yes. what I mean oh, and no I never thought that but now you've said it I'm like hmm you've got a point very so, similar so here's a bit of a, a gossipy question then you've all worked with various people um, across the uh, across the years that you've been doing panto who has surprised you most or who did you enjoy working with you know, like because obviously Steve I mean am I right in thinking you, this is going to be your 1000th performance this, apparently in so this someone's run. done the numbers it's not me yeah, well, I know. <laughs> no, apparently, yeah, it says, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a lot. So, essentially, then, who looking back, or who surprised you, or who? I tell you, have who you, is have you made fanta- a friendship with? Or I whatever? I tell you, who is fantastic in panto? I did it ten years ago, Linda Lusardi. Ah, oh, I love Linda. Yeah, yes, I adore yes. Linda she is Lusardi. So funny. And she is the campus person. I think I know. Apart from me. <laughs> and, apart from what, yes, <laughs> but she is. She is just great fun and a wonderful company leader. And she's just got such heart and warmth. And I just, she, so, you know, she really was wonderful. Okay. To, and um, unsurprising that she's still doing panto if she's, do you know what I mean? It's like, I find that interesting that she's still doing it. She's now doing it with her daughter. She, yeah. She's yeah. Daughter earlier this Lucy. Year. The thing yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. Linda Begin will always be famous, you know, and mm. she's just got something about her. You know, I love the whole family, but Linda is fantastic. Yes. Oh, thank you, Phil. 
Would you like oh, to know who I hate? Yeah, go on, who do you hate? Yeah, go on, who do you hate? Oh, no, no. You can say me if you want. No, 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 no. Oh, blimey. Same question to you, then. Oh, that's a really tricky question to answer, because so, so many have become really close friends. Tom List, as well, yeah, you know, yeah. he's like one of my best mates, and so we spend a lot of time together, and so inevitably, when we do Panto together, we, we're meeting up every week anyway so we're bat- batting ideas about to be fair me and Hayley have had quite a few little meetups haven't we and, and chatting about you know ideas for I'll be his favourite by the end of Christmas yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely absolutely <laughs> but then, then there's those that you think I, th- I think rather than those who are surprised with it's those you can learn from okay uh, that, interesting uh, that really stick in my memory and one particular uh, Melanie Walters she remember we did yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinderella together uh, comic timing and just that because she was only she was the fairy in it but she's a brilliant co- comedic actress and I learned so much just by watching a, a slow just slowing things down and speeding things up at the right time and I, I watched that because I'm one of these comics who goes I'm ten to and blah 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 and thinks that's the way to get it and it's not always necessarily the right route do you know what I mean so I love anyone you can just learn from it and, any, and you know I also admire those who do things that I don't do well so the singers and dancers who come into the pantomime some of the work with West End stars and stuff like that that just blow me away because <laughs> I'm just like I'm going oh, I wish I could do that well I was going to say because Melanie Walters is very famous for being in Gavin and Stacey yeah. so you know comedy is her thing and interesting that someone as experienced as you would still be in a position where you were wanting to learn and change yeah, yeah. but what I will say is for people who think that Steve Royal is amazing and he is amazing I'm taking nothing away from you Steve your weak spot is yeah. choreography yeah. Um, just, as, well, as will become I'm clear during the, the rehearsal period. I'm already in the dance studios with the kids because that's the level I learn at I have to be a month before everyone <laughs> else gets together I'm meeting up with these kids just to go left they make it look so easy and I've got three daughters who all dance. They all the, danced brilliantly, oh, oh, incredibly. And I, I just oh, the key it's a, oh, is yeah. a big frock, and then they can't they see, see your legs. legs. You can't oh, see your legs. There you go. The, yeah. I need to demand that yeah. <laughs> for the dance numbers. If you could just pop me in something large, so yeah. no one can see my legs, and you, Haley, finally. Um, I, I I can't pinpoint certain people. I um, I feel very lucky to have worked alongside some of the most incredible, well-known faces. I did panto with John Inman, one of my first pantos when I was young with John Inman. What Steve just said about, this is why I love Steve, (laughs) you should never stop learning in this industry. I don't care how old you are. You can learn at 22, 42, 82. Mm -hmm. You can always learn from somebody else. You should never get to a point in your career where you go, well, I know everything now and I'm dead good. That's it. If you get to that point, give up because it's, it's a very bitter industry and you don't want to be a part of that. You want to be like our Steve and like our Philip, normal, grounded, warm, lovely people. And you you want to learn from the, the best, right? So you get someone like Steve and, you know, I'm the same. I, I learn from everyone, stand side of stage, watch people, watch how they do things. You can never stop learning. And you, when you see the young ones coming into this industry, I, I love to teach, right? Like Philip, mm. 22. I love to <laughs> teach, right? And um, what I also love to do is when new young people come into a company I'm in, I want to give them what I never had. I want to explain to them when they get a bit arrogant and drop the costume on the floor that nobody's going to pick that up for you. This is your job. This is what... And in a nice way, so that they take that information with them throughout their career and then they pass it on. But there are a lot of people in this industry that aren't like that, that, you know, because they're famous or they're a celebrity, they can do whatever they want. And it's not the way to teach the younger generation. It just isn't. Does that make sense? Sorry, a long-winded way around it. I tell you what's interesting. I can already tell you all guys are going to have a great run together. I think so too. You've got a very experienced cast. Because you've got a very experienced cast and I think the audience are in for a real treat because I guess, you know, when people have bought the tickets, spent the money, they're putting their trust in you to deliver them all the Christmas, yeah. all the happy feels. You want to leave the theatre feeling on top of the world. And but I just think not just ex- a brilliant, brilliant it's, cast. It's not even just the experience of the cast. It's I, 
especially in panto, you want to work with nice people. Oh, yeah. You want people to be nice because you've got to get on with them for four yeah. weeks, five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what we've got this year. A really nice, wonderful company. Uh, well, I'm, it's a bit, of a bit of a cliche, but also the, the pandemic has helped a lot of people in the industry in the sense we've all become enthused and realised what we had, you know, because it yeah. was taken away from yeah. us for those two years or so. We re- now when we well, certainly when I go on stage now, it's got that's like invigorated energy, purely because we went through those moments where we thought we'd never do it again. And so just going on a stage now, we appreciate it so much more. And this feels like the first panther <clears throat> where we're back to normal because the yeah, children the are back in the company. Well, that, yeah, that, yeah. They make a massive difference. Yeah, of course they do. Mind yeah. I tell you what though, I've never felt healthier <clears throat> than I did last year. I didn't have a single sniffle without the kids. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm glad they're back. They can yeah, stay yeah, over yeah. there. I think, I think your character's Nurse Nelly, yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, yeah. We'll, be, um, we'll be looking at you for that. Uh, well, thanks so much for your time today, guys. It's been really, really interesting. And as I said, I think you're going to have the best run. I think the audience is, audiences are in for a real treat. Thanks for joining us on Eat Theatre, Sleep, Repeat. Like, share and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode.